Hallelujah. Thank God for Holy Ghost fire. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Father, we thank you again tonight for the privilege that we have to come together in the name of Jesus, to lift our voices in prayer and praise and adoration and thanksgiving unto you for your loving kindnesses and your tender mercies which are ours. We thank you again this night for your precious holy written word and we thank you for the great and mighty one, the Holy Spirit, whom thou hast sent to indwell us, to be our teacher and to be our guide. We trust him tonight to live big in us, to think through our minds, speak through our lips, unveil the word of God unto our spirits. We'll give you all praise, honor, and glory for everything that's wrought in our midst, for we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise God. If you have your Bibles tonight, you could open them first of all to John's Gospel, amen, or, or the first epistle, excuse me, we'll get to John's Gospel in a minute, but first John, first John the third chapter, first John the third chapter, and notice verse 8, he that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. Now, that's a little bit blind to us because all of us have failed. But actually, the Greek uh, has a continuous word or, or aspect to it. It means continues to sin or practices sin. We may miss it because we don't know any better sometimes. Amen. But thank God we, we don't practice sin. We don't make a practice of sinning. Amen. Because we're children of God. But the thought I want to get over to you is this, for this purpose, for this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Now then turn to Hebrews, the second chapter, Hebrews chapter 2, and notice verses 14 and 15. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he, talking about Jesus, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Now you need to understand that there's more than one kind of death spoken of in the Bible. And here he's not talking about physical death. You see, the Bible talks about spiritual death. The Bible talks about physical death. The Bible talks about the second death, which is being cast into the lake of fire, which burneth with fire and brimstone. Amen? But Satan ruled through spiritual death. But thank God, Jesus... It said that he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Hallelujah. Now then again, a text we looked at last night. I want to look at it again. Colossians, the second chapter, the 15th verse. Talking about Jesus. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it. That is in his death, burial, and resurrection. All of it, you see. Not just one part of it, but you see, thank God for Calvary. But if he had just died on Calvary and that was the end of it, we still wouldn't be redeemed. Thank God he was raised from the dead. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> but not only was he raised from the dead, but he ascended on high. And the book of Hebrews tells us that he carried his own blood into the holies of holies to obtain an eternal redemption for us. And then, thank God, the Bible tells us that he sat down at the right hand of the Father. You know, if he hadn't sat down, the, the redemptive process wouldn't have been completed. Oh, no, thank God for all of it. Amen. In his death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and seating at the right hand of the Father. 
He spoiled principalities and powers. Like I said last night, that word spoiled, as we use it today, we don't exactly understand what he's saying here, but he's just talking about he defeated or destroyed them. Amen. Another translation said, he stripped demon power from around us. Hallelujah. Another translation said, he made them prisoners of war. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I said last night, I like particularly 1 Corinthians 2.16, that talks about, the King James talks about the princes of, that rule this world. And uh, Moffat's translation said, the dethroned powers that rule this world. Now, uh, why do they rule the world if they're dethroned? Because the world doesn't know it. Amen. But we know that they are dethroned and they can't and do not rule us. So really, in one sense of the word, you could say that the message tonight is a sequel to the message last night. So if you weren't here last night, actually what I was talking about was victory over all the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. I uh, heard a minister say some years ago that he pulled into a filling station to get some gasoline and, uh, you know, they had part of it, you just help yourself, the other part, you know, they'll wait on you. So he drove up to that, this, the pumps where they'd wait on him, and a young man came out to pump him gas. He put the nozzle into the tank, was pumping the gas. The man said, this minister said, I noticed he had uh, tattooed on his arm, barn to raise hell. R-A-I-S-E, raise hell. Well, the word raise means to cause to rise up. That means he is, he is born to cause hell to rise up. Dictionary said raise means to cause to come forth. When he meant, when he said, I'm born to raise hell, I'm born to make hell come forth and probably live that way. And then uh, the dictionary said to raise means to give rise to. And so when he said, I'm born to raise hell, I'm born to give rise to hell. And then again, the dictionary said to raise, R-A-I-S-E, means to elevate. So when he had on his arm, I'm born to raise hell, I'm born to elevate hell. Amen. And then again, the dictionary said to raise means to exalt. And so when he had on his arm tattooed, I'm born to raise hell, I'm born to exalt hell. And then again, the dictionary said to raise means to increase. And so this man on his arm, he had tattooed the word born to increase hell. I'm out to increase hell. He, but I thought about, you know, that's the world for you. That's sinners for you. Now, we don't believe in tattooing your arm, tattooing your arm for the simple reason that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost and according to the Bible, you're forbidden. You're forbidden. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. To, to mar or, or degrade or to, to the body in any way. Amen. Now, some folks before they got saved may have got a tattooed. Well, take it off if you can. If you can't, keep it covered up. Amen. 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 But now then, I think maybe with invisible ink, we ought to tattoo, you know, invisibly on our arm or across our chest or somewhere, I'm born to R-A-Z-E hell. Born to raise hell. R-A-Z-E. R-A-Z-E, according to the dictionary, means to demolish. Glory to God. Born to demolish hell. To raise, R-A-Z-E, means, according to the dictionary, to destroy. Well, we read here about Jesus destroying. Amen. Hallelujah. That he might destroy or raise the works of hell, the works of the devil. According to the dictionary, raise, R-A-Z-E, means to remove utterly. Hallelujah. Demolish, destroy, remove utterly. We take an old building a lot of times, you know, that's dilapidated. We raise it. In other words, demolish it, destroy it. We are born 
to raise hell. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might raise hell. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now turn with me, turn with me to John's Gospel, the 14th chapter, and I'll just prove it to you. John's Gospel, the 14th chapter. Let's start reading here with the 10th verse. Jesus is speaking. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Remember what those works was? He has manifested it might destroy the works of the devil. He doeth the works. Believe me that I'm in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily. Now, a lot of times when we say verily, verily to us, it might not mean much in our culture. But in that land and under that culture, they tell us to say verily, verily is the equivalent to us saying, I tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, you believe on him? Amen. Well, you could write right beside this verse, this is talking about me. This means me. He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. Now, how are you going to do those works? And raise hell. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Now, a lot of times, people have thought that he's talking about prayer here. But he isn't talking about prayer. Actually, the Greek word translated ask also means demand. Whatever you demand in my name, I'll do it. Oh, no, you're not demanding something of God. You're demanding it of the devil. Amen. And uh, later on in the 16th chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus said about prayer, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. Amen. That's prayer. But here he's talking about using the name of Jesus like they did in the Acts of the Apostles. No, he's not talking about praying to Jesus because if that's what he's talking about, then the early church never did do it. You go through the Acts of the Apostles and underline every time, and if it tells you to whom they prayed, every time it tells you God. Not one single instant in the Acts of the Apostles did they ever pray to Jesus. So if that's what he meant, then they missed it. But that's not what he meant. That meant like Peter and John at the gate called Beautiful. As they were going into the temple through the gate called Beautiful at the hour of prayer, the Word of God tells us that there sat by a man, a lame man, a crippled man who never had walked. The Word of God tells us that he was set there daily to beg alms. And seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked an alms. And Peter fastened his eyes on him with John and said, Look on us. And they looked on him, expecting to receive something of him. And that's the reason he told him to look on him. He wanted to arouse his expectancy. And he looked on him, expecting to receive something of him. And then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He demanded in Jesus' name. He asked in Jesus' name that he rise up and walk. And whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it. And thank God he did it. Hallelujah. 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 The works that I do shall ye do also. And even greater works than these shall ye do because I go unto the Father. Now what did the ministry or works of Jesus? We know in his death, burial, and resurrection that we can't do that. He did that for us. And that's a once and for all thing. He's our substitute. But here he said, the works that I do, he that believeth on me shall he do also. 
Well, the Word of God said in Matthew's Gospel, the ninth chapter and the 35th verse, talking about the Lord Jesus, that he went about their cities and villages teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all manner of sickness and the manner of disease among them. Hallelujah. So his works or ministry consisted of teaching, preaching, and healing. Hallelujah. And so when we teach the Word of God, we're, we're raising hell. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the reason all hell gets mad about it. Amen. And tries to stop it. Because when people know the truth, the truth will set you free. Now, he didn't just say, didn't just say the truth will set you free. He said, ye shall know the truth. Ye shall know the truth. It's knowing the truth that sets a man free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Well, the devil don't want people to get a hold of the truth. He'll bind and blind their minds with religious thinking. Amen. Sometimes with wrong church thinking. But thank God the Word of God. Get your mind renewed with the Word and think in line with His Word. Hallelujah. And knowing the truth and acting on the truth. He shall know the truth and the truth will set you free or it will make you free. Hallelujah. Well, that can come about by teaching the Word. Thank God for doing the works of Jesus. And so when we teach the Word of God, we're raising hell. R-A-Z. Amen. Demolishing. Demolishing. And the devil don't like for you to demolish his ideas. And you'll find out in a lot of church circles, really, a lot of it isn't the Word of God, and it isn't revelation knowledge that came from the Word of God, but it's just simply ideas that either human and a lot of times satanic, that Satan has robbed people, amen, of the real thing. But thank God for the Word. Thank God for the word. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen. And then when you preach the gospel, you're, you're raising hell. <laughs> Hallelujah. And hell certainly does get raised, doesn't it? Demolished, but also it comes to the front. Amen. It'll raise its ugly head. You know, when we talk about hell, we're talking about Satan and all of his cohorts. We're talking about the kingdom of darkness. And he doesn't want light. He, in fact, he doesn't like light. But thank God we are children of light, not children of the darkness. Amen. And then healing. Thank God for healing. All manner of sickness and all manner of disease. The Bible said concerning Jesus in Acts 10, 38, who went about doing good and healing. Healing is good. Amen. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Well, he was certainly raising hell, wasn't he? Amen. Demolishing the works of the devil. Now, Satan, as we said last night, has been potentially defeated. Jesus' victory is ours. But what is ours potentially must, if it's going to do us any good, become ours in reality. In other words, really ours. Amen. The scripture said, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Another translator said, whom the Son has set free is really free. Hallelujah. But sometimes those are just words that people read or words that people say and there's no reality to it. It's acting upon God's Word. It's acting like God's Word's true. It's acting like God's Word's soul that brings the reality of it into our lives. Hallelujah. 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 When you get people healed, you're raising hell. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Who went about doing good, the works that I do shall ye do also. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Amen. Satanic oppression. Sickness is satanic oppression, according to what Jesus said here. 
But thank God we have the name of Jesus. And when we exercise that name, we are raised in hell. You remember in the Acts of the Apostles, the seven sons of Siva? You remember they saw Paul casting out devils? So they found a person that was demon or devil possessed, and they said, We adjure thee in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, come out of him. And the devil in that man, using his voice, spoke up and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? <laughs> they had no right. They had no authority to that name. They had no authority to be R-A-Z, raised in hell. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And he, that man leaped on those seven folks and, uh, and whipped all of them. They ran out, you know. <laughs> Amen. But thank God not so with you and me. He knows me. He knows you. If you're a child of God, he knows you. Amen. Hallelujah. And when you cast out devils, praise God, you are raised in hell. We're born, that's what we were born for, is to raise hell. Hallelujah. 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 Now you get people delivered from all things that may bind them in a number of different ways, by teaching the Word of God, by preaching the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. I tell the story sometimes in one of my meetings, I saw this very distinguished and well-dressed person. I don't know because I'd never been to this city to, to uh, preach before. Uh, I'd been there, but not to preach. Didn't know this congregation. I don't know whether this person is a member of their congregation or not. But I asked the pastor, who is that person that so just stands out from the crowd? Well, he said, I don't know. He's not one of our folks. And as far as I know, doesn't live here in our city. But I'll find out. So he and the pastor introduced himself. And you come to find out that this person was the office manager of one of the leading evangelists of America. And uh, now they believed in the Word of God all right and a new birth, but they didn't know about healing. But this person has discovered that they had terminal cancer. And so they came to my meeting endeavoring because medical science had said we could do nothing. And so then I got acquainted with the pastor, introduced me to them. And so I'm knowing, you see, from the background that they had no teaching. And you see, Jesus put teaching first, didn't he? The scripture said he went around about their villages and cities teaching in the city of God, preaching the gospel, healing. You see, a lot of folks want to get to the healing, but they don't want to take time for the teaching or the preaching. And that's the reason they miss it. Amen. And so I said to the person, well, just, just be in every service, particularly the day service, because we taught on faith in the daytime, you see. We call it faith seminar or faith clinic. Oh, I'm going to be here every service as long as the meeting runs. Well, we ran the meeting for, uh, for four weeks, and that person stayed all that time. Well, we got over into the third week, actually. Now, the Bible said in the 14th chapter of Acts, and you know that's what the apostles, and not just the apostles, but what the ministry was doing and the people did in the Acts of Apostles, they're still raising hell. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and so the scripture says in that 14th chapter of Acts about the first missionary journey of Paul and Barnabas that they were ministering in a certain place. And it says, the, and there, the seventh verse of the 14th chapter says, and there they preached the gospel. And then the eighth verse says, And there sat by a man that was lame, crippled from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The next verse said, The same the man heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith, said, Stand upright on thy feet. And the man leaped and walked, praise God, and was healed. Amen. Well, Paul was raised in hell. He's demolishing the works of the devil, wasn't he? Amen. I said, amen. amen. Praise God. But now here's what I wanted to get over to you. You see, that's one way, not the only way, but one way. Some folks, you know, uh, that don't know the Bible, they'll say, well, you know, of course, now Paul was an apostle. Paul being an apostle had nothing to do with the healing of this man. The Bible said he had faith to be healed. Look at that ninth verse. He had faith to be healed. 
He wasn't healed because Paul was an apostle. He wasn't healed because Paul had faith. He was healed because he had faith. But where did he get faith? He got faith from what he heard Paul preach. For faith comes or teach, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen? Now, all Paul did was preached, and then he perceived. The man had faith. Now, why? How could he perceive that? Well, I'll tell you. I said to this individual who was office manager of this leading evangelist of America, I said to them, just, just, just come and be in the services and because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word, and when, when the faith comes, I'll know it. Well, one morning I was teaching, and I looked back there, you know, and I saw this person, and their face was lit up like a neon sign in the dark. The entrance of his words give with light, and it's just like a light on their face. Well, I knew then that they'd got a hold of it. Faith had come. Amen. See, it doesn't take any effort on the part of the will of man to get faith. As soon as the light comes, faith's there. As soon as the light comes, faith is there. Amen. And so I knew faith was there. So I just stopped right in the middle of my Bible lesson and pointed the individual out and said, that's it, that's it, you've got it. Amen. And they stood up to lift their hands and praise God and started talking in tongues. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Hallelujah. Well, we're raising hell. Hallelujah. Demolishing. Destroying the works of the devil. Now again, you remember in Isaiah, the 10th chapter, the 20th verse, the Bible tells us that the, that the yoke shall be destroyed. The yoke shall be destroyed. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, there's yokes of all kinds that are upon people. They're bound a lot of times in many different ways. But it's the anointing that destroys, not only breaks, we say breaks the yoke, but destroys the yoke. Destroys the yoke, the anointing. Well, the Word of God's anointed. Hallelujah. The Word of God's anointed. And you teach the Word of God under the anointing. And many times the, the, the yoke is broken. The yoke is destroyed. That, ma that individual that was uh, office manager, praise God, of this leading evangelistic ministry, was instantly, the yoke was destroyed. The yoke of sickness. And not only that, but he's filled with the Holy Ghost. Speaking in other tongues, never sought the Holy Ghost a moment in his life. But you see the same anointing, the same Holy Ghost that'll heal you, will fill you if you'll just yield to him. And a lot of times when you yield to him, well, it just, it just, it all works. Praise God. The anointing, everybody say the anointing. It is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Hallelujah. But now everybody doesn't receive on that level. I don't know why, but there's a number of reasons why. But thank God, God in his great mercy, in his great provision has made provision for folks to receive at various levels. And he'll meet you wherever your faith is. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now then, Many times there are manifestations of gifts of the Spirit. You know, in the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians, Paul said, but the manifestation, the 7th verse of 1 Corinthians 12, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. And then he goes on to list seven more manifestations of the Spirit. Among those manifestations are special faith, as the Amplified calls it. King James just calls it the gift of faith. The Amplified calls it special faith because, you see, we already have saving faith. We already have general faith. We already have Bible faith. And so it is a special a manifestation of faith. And so, uh, to another, you see, special faith. To another, the work of the miracles. To another, the gifts of healings in the poor. Well, to another, prophecy. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all of these worketh. 
all of these worketh that one and self same spirit in other words that's the way the Holy Spirit works we're talking about works well it was by the Holy Ghost that Jesus did his works he didn't do those works because he was the son of God though he was the son of God because the Bible tells us that he laid aside his mighty power and glory when he came into this world and and he he didn't do any works until he was anointed with the Spirit. Do you remember Luke's Gospel? There, the, the, the uh, third and fourth chapters tells us about him being baptized by John in Jordan, and as he came straightway up out of the water, the Holy Ghost, actually in a visible form of the dove, came and lighted upon him. And God spoke from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Amen. It was after he was anointed. Now then, as you come into the fourth chapter then, the fourth chapter of Luke, it says that he returned in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah to Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region around about. And he taught. That's the first thing he did after being anointed with the Holy Ghost. And he taught in their synagogue, the Scripture said, being glorified of all. And then it said when he was come to his hometown of Nazareth, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. And if you go on reading, you see the two primary things he anointed him to do was to preach and to heal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Well, thank God for the anointing. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the manifestations of the Spirit. Thank God for the gifts of the Spirit. Hallelujah. And when we operate in those things, we are raised in hell. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Demolishing, demolishing the works of the devil. Amen. Praise his holy name forevermore. Amen. Praise God. So teach the word. Preach the word. Hallelujah. Yield to the Holy Ghost. He wants to manifest himself. These things belong to the church. Somebody said, well, do you have this gift or that gift? No. The church has all of them. I said, the church has all of them. They are manifested through individuals as the Spirit wills. And I th know that the more we know about them, the more we'll be able to yield to him and flow with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Well, I didn't know these things. I was born again all right, and I got healed because I just saw what the Bible said about faith and prayer, and that works. When you pray, believe you receive, and you shall have. And on the bed of sickness, partially paralyzed, had been mostly paralyzed, and hadn't walked and been bed fast 16 months, two serious organic heart troubles, uh, an incurable blood disease, the doctor said, that if you didn't have anything else wrong with, the incurable blood disease alone would prove to be fatal to you. But on that bed, I got born again. Now, I was a church member. I, you know, I trusted church membership. Church membership won't save you. I believe in belonging to the church, all right. But get born again first. Amen. But I got born again. Thank God if you were born again, then the Holy Ghost resides in your spirit and bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. The Holy Ghost within. Amen. And he's in there to lead you and guide you. But see, I had no teaching. Nobody told me. Too many times folks don't know that. He tried his best to lead me into healing and eventually did. And I was healed. I was healed. I mean, in less than 15 minutes when I begin to act on God's Word, I'm standing out of the bed with paralysis gone, heart problems gone, blood disease gone. And then I said to myself, and I wouldn't call you that, but I said to myself, you're a poor, silly fool. If you were to listen, you could have been up from here nine months ago. But you see, I didn't know you're supposed to listen to that inward man, that inward monitor. Amen? Amen? Amen. And so therefore, as a young Baptist boy, I preached healing, laid hands on people, anointed them with oil because I found all that in the Bible and got people healed. Now, I didn't have any manifestation of the Spirit. I didn't know about those things. We Baptists stayed out of the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians. <laughs> we stayed out of the 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians. 
Now, we got into the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians about the Lord's Supper and practiced the Lord's Supper. We skipped the 12th chapter, and we got over into the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, the great love chapter. We skipped the 14th chapter because you get in there and get confused. And we, we got into the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, you know, the great resurrection chapter. And they're all good and great, but thank God for the 12th and the 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Amen. Brother John Osteen said when he was pastor, and he pastored the Central Bible Church in Baytown, Texas for 15 years. And so he said one Sunday morning, he is preaching uh, from this 12th chapter. He had enough nerve to get into it as Baptist. And he's preaching about these gifts. And these gifts of healings are the doctors and medical science, you know, that are gifted. And these languages are those that have studied languages and then whiskets, you know. And he said, the further I got, the so I was getting away. But finally, he said, right in the middle of my sermon, I stopped and said, folks, just discount everything I've said. I don't know a thing anywhere about what I'm talking about. <laughs> Some way or another, his heart told him. Some way or another, his, his spirit was telling him, you know, that's not it. That's not it. You don't know what you're talking about. And sure enough, he didn't know what he's talking about. One time I remember before I was filled and I believed in healing and I went around full gospel folks because they preached healing and it strengthened my faith, but they preached being filled with the Spirit and speaking with tongues. And I said to myself, well, I'll put up with a little fanaticism to have some fellowship around faith and healing. I believe in the Holy Ghost, all right, but I don't believe in that tongue business. And one time in my little country church as a Baptist pastor, I made a derogatory remark about tongues. The moment I did, my heart smote me, my spirit, you see. And I stopped right then and rectified, said, folks, forgive me. I don't know what I'm talking about. I shouldn't have said what I said. It's wrong. I just don't know anything about it. Forget it. And Lord, forgive me, and went on. Amen. Praise God. You need to learn to listen to your heart. A lot of things you wouldn't say if you'd listen to your heart. A lot of things you wouldn't do if you listened to your heart. You know what I mean? Your spirit, right down in here on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. But I'm talking right now about raising hell. I'm talking about demolishing the works of the devil. The anointing will destroy, demolish or destroy, amen. The anointing will destroy the yoke. The yoke of bondage shall be destroyed by the anointing. Now that comes a lot of times by uh, teaching the Word of God. The Word's anointed, and people believe it, and people act upon it. Now this man in the 14th chapter of Acts who was crippled, never had walked, crippled from his mother's womb, was instantly healed, through his faith, not Paul's faith, not because Paul was an apostle. Well, now, you know, some people said the apostles had that kind of power. When the last apostle died, all that ceased. That's ignorance gone to seed. Amen. This man was healed because he had faith. If, he had, if you could be healed by having faith, then you can be healed by having faith now. If faith worked then, it works now. Faith hadn't been done away with, has it? Amen. How did he get faith, and where did he get it? The Word of God said the same, the same, the man heard Paul speak. What did Paul speak that caused faith to rise up in him? The seventh verse says, and there they, Paul and Barnabas, preach. What? The gospel, the gospel. Good news, good news, good news. Hallelujah. Well, many times the bondage, in this case, the bondage was sickness. The bondage was disease. The yoke, you see, of bondage. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Amen? You see, Jesus defeated the devil. Jesus put him to Mount Nort. Jesus dethroned him. But he's still ruling in this world because the world doesn't know that. But thank God we know that. And so we're out, hallelujah, to raise hell. Amen. Born to raise hell. Amen. And one way of doing it is by teaching and preaching the Word of God. Amen. Now, another way, of course, is just simply yielding to the Spirit, responding to the Holy Ghost, as he may manifest himself. Amen. As he may manifest himself. Thank God for the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. I was preaching several years ago, 1952, to be more explicit about it, in the month of May. 
down in Broken Bow, Oklahoma, down the southeast corner of Oklahoma. Several churches were cooperating together with the meeting, and uh, the first assembly of church there had built a new brick church right down on the main street, seat about 800, and more than that were crowded into it. But I came through a side door one night into the service. I'd stay back and pray till they got through with all the preliminaries because I didn't have any singers or anybody to help me. I'm just traveling alone. And uh, I didn't want to get out there, you know, because the, 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 the Pentecostal peoples, you know, they'll criticize people that's got ritualism and formality, but they're in ritualism. They're in a rut. And you, you, you can't get them out of their rut. They're going to take up 45 minutes to an hour every night. Well, I didn't want to go through all that 45 and minutes of unprofitable goings on. Because so many times it was. Amen. I wanted to come fresh from the presence of God. So I stayed back and prayed and didn't hear what went before. See. Amen. And so as I came through a side door onto the platform, I knew just about the time they're going to turn the service to me every night. And so I came through the door. I saw this man lying on a stretcher there. And then I looked the congregation over, and I saw six distinguished-looking gentlemen over here to my right, all sitting together on one pew about four or five pews back from the front. And I just said to myself, you know, on the inside of the thought, who are those fellows? Because they look very distinguished-looking gentlemen. And on the inside of me, the Holy Ghost said, they are so-called ministers from such and such a church. And I want you to change your subject. I had a subject already. I want you to change your subject. So I changed my subject, and I began to preach. And uh, at one time, I could quote probably three-fourths of the New Testament. So he said, change your subject. I got no nuts or, nut, no nuts or anything. Notes, I just took off preaching. Amen. And quoting the New Testament. And I got out to the place and I said, some folks said, if you heal the sick like Jesus and the apostles did, why don't you heal everybody like they did? I said, they didn't. Jesus didn't heal everybody. The apostles didn't heal everybody. One of these fellows leaped to his feet. He's going to challenge me. Two on either side pulled him back down. <laughs> and I said to them, now I wouldn't preach anything I couldn't prove by the New Testament. I'm a stickler for the New Testament. I said, some folks said, we believe New Testament speak where the New Testament speaks and sound where it's silent. I said, the only difference between me and them is they lie about it and I actually do it. <laughs> Thought I'd needle them a little bit while I'm at it. <laughs> Amen. Now I said, open your Bibles in the New Testament to Mark's gospel, the sixth chapter and the fifth verse. Now, you can read, can't you? If you can't read, get somebody close by to read it for you so you'll know we're getting it right. And it read, and he, talking about Jesus, could there do no mighty work, his hometown of Nazareth. Didn't say he wouldn't do it, said he couldn't do it. And he could there do no mighty work. Say he laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them. Well, how many is a few? Not many, is it? That's all he managed to get healed in his hometown. I know other times he got everybody healed. But now why, why didn't he heal everybody? All right, go on reading the next verse. And he marveled because of their unbelief. If unbelief hindered him then, unbelief will hinder him now. And so if he's going to help them, he's got to do something about their unbelief. So go on reading. And he went around about their cities and villages teaching in their synagogue. Teaching the word for faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Amen? Amen. Well, then I came to the close of my message, and I wished I could do it more often. But it ain't me doing it. <laughs> I came to the close of my message, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak thou and say thou unto this congregation. I'm going to stand on this platform and speak to that man on the stretcher. And he's going to rise up well right here in the front of all of you. And if he doesn't, then I'm a false prophet. If he does, then this is a sign. It's a sign unto you. It's a sign unto me that his spirit is upon me and he's called me to such a ministry. I did and he did and God did. <laughs> Amen. The man walked off well. 
Well, unless he told you you can't just do that, you can stand there and holler all day. No, teach him the word and get him to believe or to agree with you, you see. But sometimes, amen, it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Amen. Now, those folks, though they were wrong, they were sincere and honest. They came to me after the service. See, they saw that miracle. They, they ha I, I kept giving them the New Testament. They told me we didn't know that verse was in the New Testament, and he could there do no mighty work. They said, we're going to keep coming. They kept coming. Every night they'd shake hands with just his friend and laugh and talk. Said, I'll tell you one thing, boy. We're learning things that's in the New Testament that we never didn't know was in there before. <laughs> See, that's why God does things as a sign sometimes. To help religious people who are sincere and honest but just don't know any better. Amen. Amen. I don't think we particularly need a sign here tonight, but if we did, he'd do it. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. But you see, we were out raising hell. That's one way to raise hell. Yeah. Amen. The anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The Spirit of the Lord's upon me because he's anointed me, Jesus said. Well, the works that I do shall he do also. We'll just have to have the Holy Ghost and the anointing to do it also, or else we're not going to do it. Thank God for the anointing. Yeah. Now, the old black preacher called it the ointment. Thank God for the ointment. <laughs> well, the Bible does talk about the ointment of the Spirit. But then somebody asked him, said, what is that ointment you keep talking about? <laughs> well, he said, I don't know what it is, but said, I know when it ain't. <laughs> well, I'm just about in the same boat. Yeah. I may not know what it is, but I know when it ain't. Yeah. Thank God for the anointing. Yeah. Thank God for the anointing. God for the anointing. Thank God for the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you'll know the truth. The truth will set you free. Hallelujah. Teach and preach the word. And the anointing, the yoke is destroyed. Through manifestations and gifts of the Spirit, the yoke is destroyed. Hallelujah. The yoke of sickness in that man's body. Doctor said they, he ought to have been dead 10 days ago. How he's lived, we don't know. Amen. But the yoke was destroyed. Hallelujah. Through a manifestation of gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Several years ago, some of the group, well, y'all were with you, with us. We was in Philadelphia. I wish it happened more often with me. I can't make it happen. If it could, I'd do it. <laughs> But there were four ladies sitting down off the platform over to one side in wheelchairs. Suddenly the anointing came upon. Now the anointing had been upon me to preach. There is an anointing to preach. There is an anointing to minister. There is an anointing to sing. There is an anointing to pray. But the Holy Ghost also anoints you, manifests himself. Praise God. Holy Ghost and anointing are synonymous terms. And so suddenly the anointing came upon me and I knew exactly what it was. Smith Wigglesworth says, when the gift of faith, or as Amplified has special faith, is a manifestation, you know ahead of time what God's going to do. And I knew ahead of time what God was going to do. So I pointed to one of the ladies, the second one, there's four of them sitting there in wheelchairs, the second one to, the, to, the, to their, their right, my left. She said, you talking to me? I said, yeah, I'm talking to you. Then I dropped my hand, and I said to her, Now, sister, I'm going to stand right here on the platform and speak to you. I'm going to say to you, Rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. When I point to you and say that, get up and walk. So I pointed to her and said, Rise and walk in the name of Jesus. And she stood up, started walking. Didn't walk too good to begin with, but nobody helped her. The more she walked, the better she walked until she was walking fine. We learned later she'd been in the chair three years with rheumatoid arthritis. Then not only that, but she had emphysema. Well, she said to some of them at the book table two or three days later, I still can't believe it. <laughs> well, it wasn't her faith then, was it? It wasn't her faith, was it? It wasn't her faith. Because she still can't believe it. She knows it's so because she's standing there talking, walking. Amen. 
Well, it wasn't my faith, because it had been my faith, I could have done the same thing with the other three ladies. Now, I can minister to them in faith by laying on a hand, because that's one way to minister. But I can't say the same thing to them unless the Lord said to say it to them. Amen? So it wasn't my faith. What was it? It was a special manifestation of faith. That's one way. Thank God for special faith. Say it out loud. Thank God for special faith. Hallelujah. 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 Thank God for special faith. Amen. Praise God. That's one way. The anointing. See, the yoke shall be destroyed. The yoke in her life happened to be rheumatoid arthritis, bound to that chair for three years. Emphysema, difficulty in breathing. But thank God the yoke was destroyed. The anointing destroyed the yoke. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it out loud. Thank God for the anointing. Thank God for the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's one way. That's one way. But do you ever remember what Jesus said in the seventh chapter of John's gospel? The 37th through the 39th verses. The last day of the feast. Jesus stood and cried and said, Ho, every man is a thirst, let him come unto me and drink. As the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believeth on him should receive, for as yet the Holy Ghost was not given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now he's talking about the Holy Ghost, isn't he? Now remember that Jesus said, read from Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord's upon me because he's anointed me. Hallelujah. Now notice in connection with the Holy Ghost, he said, out of his belly shall flow a river? No, no, rivers, plural, rivers, rivers. Out of his belly, or another translation said, out of his innermost being, it's out of his spirit. Because the Holy Spangle, the Singolo Braga, the Sikata, Vrabaka, Erodo, Kosana, Makati, Erede, Ukoto, Brakate, Sifene, Angadai. Holy Spirit dwells in your spirit. Holy Spirit communes and communicates with your spirit. Your spirit will pass that information on to your mind, and if your mind is thoroughly renewed with the Word, then acting upon it will bring marvelous results. The glory of the Lord shall be in manifestation. The power of God shall be manifested. The name of Jesus shall be glorified. That's what I said in tongues. Hallelujah. 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 Paso no no kite. Paso hoko no kite. Paso hoko no kite. Listen. Give heed. Hear what's being said. That's what I said in tongues. Amen. Listen. Hear. Give heed to what's being said. It'll change your life. It'll set you in another direction. <laughs> It'll cause you to excel. <laughs> you know what I said to you? Now do it. <laughs> now sometimes, recently, and I'm going to get into it a little bit more during the week, but I'm going to touch on it a little bit right now. But in our Holy Ghost meetings, the Lord said to me, pray in the morning time, the day sessions, teach on the subject of pray, a prayer. And teach prayer both by precept and example. That means by word and deed. So we teach the word and then we pray. Amen. Well, for over a year, actually about uh, 15 months now in these meetings, we uh, again and again in praying, the Spirit of God keeps talking about the Spirit. I keep praying it out. And then sometimes you'll pray it out in English. Uh, the spirit of knowing and the spirit of seeing will be in manifestation. Really, he's talking about the revelation gifts, you see. Will be in manifestation in a greater measure than what you've seen heretofore. Again and again, he said, the spirit of seeing, the spirit of knowing. Well, now, it always worked with me from the time I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. But he said there's going to be a greater manifestation. And, and we're talking about now the... The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Sometimes 
we know what it is, it's sickness. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes it's just a matter of laying hands on them just to be blessed. Sometimes it's a matter of the joy being restored. Hallelujah. Praise God. But a lot of time I'm teaching or preaching, uh, well, sometimes in praying before I ever go to the service, I see myself do certain things and minister in certain ways. Sometimes I'm preaching and I see myself. Amen. So I just act that out then. I go lay hands on people because, you see, in that method, the anointing destroys the yoke. Sometimes you know what you're ministering, sometimes you don't. I saw myself a while ago. Oh, back when I was over that way a little bit. I saw myself lay hands on this man here. I don't know what for. Got no idea at all. Just get up and stand up here. Praise God forevermore. But whatever it is, sometimes you don't need to know. Sometimes it ain't none of your business. Amen. That's just between him and the Lord, or her and the Lord, whoever it is. But whatever it is, see, by the laying on of hands, by laying on of hands, God's anointing is transmitted. And it's the anointing. It's the anointing. The, whoo, samahalahana. Kansamalakata. Being hard-headed towards others will also carry over into your spiritual life, and you'll be hard-headed toward God refusing to listen and do what he said. Now then, change your thinking. Think in line with him and be kind and tender-hearted towards all, everyone, everyone. And the blessings of the Lord upon you shall come. The, ooh, samalahani, samalahani. Wanting it your way. No, you can't have your way. Want it to be God's way. God's way. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Simuro Tolakata. Thank you, Father. Yeah, the anointing. Yes, uh, yeah. Oh, my, 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 my. <laughs> that which has followed you like a little dog, a little pup following along behind you for so long. That which has harassed you and held you in bondage is now broken. Gone. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Take your hand off of him. Leave him alone. Say mahula kada bethiete. No more bondage. Got it? Got it. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> myself. I saw myself laying hands on this man. You say, what for? I don't know. Just saw myself laying hands on him. You say, what for? I don't know. Really didn't any of my business. Yours either. <laughs> but God can minister to him if he wants to. Amen. And whatever he needs, he's well able Thank you, Father. to meet that need. Thank you, Father. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Stir up. Stir up the gift that's in you. Stir up that which has been given you. Ha, 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 ha. Walking in the light. Walking in the light of the revelation that's come unto you brings rich dividends, great power. In the name. The name. The name. The name. The name. The name of Jesus. Now, Satan, you leave him alone. You've harassed him and held him back from walking in the fullness of what you have for him, what the Lord has for him. Now, I adjure you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, desist in your maneuvers. Leave him alone. Harass him no more. Ha, 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 ha. Go ahead and laugh at it. Go ahead and laugh at it. Go ahead and laugh at it. Hallelujah. 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 Well, we are raised in hell. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I heard the Spirit say, Mark, it's all coming together. Now you are beginning to see more clearly. And more, more, more will be given unto you. <laughs> Till you'll be able to say, this is it, and this is the way. I walk in it, and I do it. And the fullness thereof shall be manifest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise your holy name forever. 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 Name forever. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Word of God tells us in that same 12th chapter, 1 Corinthians, I, quote, I begin with the seventh verse earlier, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. But the previous verse said that there are diversities of operations. There are differences of administrations, but it said there are diversities of operations. Now remember, he's still talking about the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And I'll be honest with you, of course, I don't understand Anything that's supernatural, you can't understand it with your natural mind. There's an element of mystery about anything that's supernatural. Amen. I said amen. amen. And so sometimes, you know, sometimes, but out of your belly, out of your inner man, flow rivers of living water. But it sounds strange. I've never done it before. Never had the Spirit of God say it to me before. But thank God for something new. <laughs> Doesn't mean it'll ever happen again. But here's the way the Lord said. And, and it's right in here. I don't know. I don't know who it is. Sometimes you do know. And you go right to him. Sometimes you don't know. But he said, I want you to minister to one whom their legs are just trembling with the power of God right now. Hallelujah. Now, if that's you, I want you, if you, if you can, if you can't, we'll help you. Get up. Praise God and come stand right here. Somebody in this area here. Amen. Amen. Somewhere in here. Help him. Help him. Help him. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's somebody over here. That's the one we want to get to. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> the name of Jesus. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
<laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. going to get better. It's going to be better. Woo! Samahula Mini. Samahula Mini. Samahula Mini.
this is just the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs>